creating and selling an online course is a terrible idea. And I wanna show you two reasons why and the only exception to the rule. Hey guys, what's going on? Yuriel Kim here, CEO and founder of Healthpreneur. We help health professionals and coaches get clients and scale their coaching businesses online faster and without the grind. And I was, I've been having conversations over the years with many people, and I, I hear this common, you know, this common notion of like, I'm building out my next course, I'm building out my courses. I'm like, what do you mean courses? Like, why not just one to start with? But I want to share with you uh, two major reasons why I think creating and selling an online course is one of the worst things you can do with your time and your expertise. So before I dive into that, some stats for you. The online course industry is a $337 billion opportunity. It's huge. And since COVID alone, there's been an additional, I think it's 16,000 new courses online that have been added into the marketplace. In fact, Coursera, which is one of the leading platforms for online courses, sold $30 million in courses just during the COVID pandemic alone. So the opportunity is huge. And so a lot of people come online Online, or they have an online presence, then they want to launch these new courses or they want to launch the next course. The challenge though is the following, is that according to some really interesting research from Podia, they looked at 132,000, 132,000 different online courses. And I want to share some startling statistics with you. Number one, they found that the average completion rate was 15%. That's one and a five, not five zero, 15% completion rate. So 85% of people who purchased the course didn't even finish it. And if you're like me and you actually want to transform people's lives, what's the point of doing that, right? The second thing is that the uh, average price points of these courses, 130, 132,000 online courses that they looked at in terms of data size, average price point was $137. So I'm going to show you why from a altruistic standpoint and a financial standpoint, creating and selling a course is just a waste of time. And I share this because I've created many courses since 2005. And some have collected a tremendous amount of digital dust and others have done okay. And I'm gonna give you, toward the end of this video, the only time, the only time I think it makes sense to sell an online course. So stick with me for that. Okay, so let's dive in. So the first reason why selling an online course is I think a terrible idea is because no one completes it. As I mentioned, 15% completion rate, which means that if you are in the business of helping people improve their lives, how are they supposed to improve their lives if they don't even finish the thing they started? Uh, another study from MIT found a 96% dropout, 96% dropout rate from people who start an online course. So why is this happening? Like if we can't care about helping people lose weight, improve their health, all of the reasons we get into business as health professionals. What are we looking to accomplish here if the very people who pay us money to go through this course don't even do it? So there's three reasons why this happens. And, I, and, I've, and I've noted these over the years because I'm fascinated with why we do what we do as humans and why we don't do what we say we want to do. So there's three facets here. One is price. I've mentioned this before and you know what I'm about to say. The less you pay, repeat it with me, the less you pay attention. So when someone spends $137, they're not gonna do the work. I promise you this. I would be willing to bet a very large sum of money that if someone did a course for $137 that was anything longer than one day, they wouldn't complete it. And I used the example in a previous video about a parenting course I purchased last year for $247. And I asked you, when was the last time I logged into that course? And I was legitimately asking because I couldn't remember. That's the problem with low price courses. So when you have a low price, the people who are buying the stuff don't show up. That's a fundamental problem. So price is number one. Second is desire. A lot of courses solve nice to solve problems as opposed to must solve problems. Or stated otherwise, the people buying them are not necessarily in a, I will do absolutely whatever I need to do to solve this problem once and for all. So the analogy that I use is imagine you have a headache and I'm not a huge fan of drugs or over-the-counter stuff in the first place, but the occasional time I have a headache, which is very rare, I'll use an Advil. Now, what I don't want is like just the tip of the Advil. I want the whole Advil. And what the problem with a lot of courses is, is that they're selling the tip of the Advil or they're selling to people who actually don't really want to get rid of the headache because if they did, they would take the whole Advil. In our case of selling a course, if you are selling a weight loss solution, a course to help people lose weight or rebalance their hormones or whatever it is, and 
someone's investing $100, $200 with you, whatever it is, they're not fully committed. Number one, based on the price. And number two, the very fact that they're only investing one to $200 tells you everything about their level of commitment to solving the problem in the first place. So for them, although the problem that you're solving is a very big problem for many people, it's just not big enough for those particular customers. I was having a conversation recently with a friend and he runs a very large eight-figure business in the coaching space. And one of the things that he mentioned, he said, we have worked with some of the biggest people in the industry and we have very seldomly found any correlation between people buying a $500 course and those people moving up to higher ticket coaching. So in this case, we're talking about someone who's offering a $500 course and then like a 10, 15, 20,000 hour coaching program. And he noticed, and I, and I agree with this because I've seen the same thing, is that very, very seldomly or just, I mean, a tiny percentage of people buying a $500 course are the types of people going into higher ticket coaching programs because fundamentally they are different people. Now you might say, Yuri, well, that's pretty limiting. Can people grow? Can people like evolve into bigger desires or move into other things? And oh, absolutely 100%. And, and there's this common thinking in marketing that, you know, a customer is a customer. I've been in business since 2005 and I can tell you having sold everything from a free book plus shipping to $1 things to $5 to $50,000 things, there's a very big difference. And a customer is not a customer. So someone who's giving you $200 for a course is not the same person who's going to pay you two, five, or even $20,000 for the ultimate solution. Now, again, there's obviously caveats to that for sure. But in general, if you want to build a business of high value, highly committed clients, it's not going to come on the back of cheap courses because for them, their level of desire and commitment to solving the problem is just a seven out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. Okay. Third is inertia. And this is, I think, the big one is that left to our, I don't care who you are, okay? Left to our own devices, most humans will do nothing. I would consider myself a pretty disciplined, self starting person, but even I need a kick in the ass. Even I need accountability. Even I need coaching. And that's why either the parenting course that I bought, it wasn't a 10 out of 10 must for me or other things were just more important. So that just went by the wayside. And this is what happens. And this goes back to price. I can promise you if I added a zero to that purchase, 2,500 for instance, instead of 250, I probably would have shown up differently. I probably would have shuffled some priorities around to make that a priority. But that doesn't happen when it's only a couple bucks. So this is why most courses lead to nothing other than low completion, high refunds. And quite honestly, a lot of our clients who come to us come to us after having done a lot of the $2,000 do it yourself marketing courses from a lot of the gurus out there who I'm not going to mention because I think a lot of them are amazing. It's just the stuff that they're putting out there fundamentally doesn't really transform the businesses of the people they're trying to serve. And that's just the reality. Okay. So the first reason why I'm not a huge fan of selling courses is because no one completes them. And if no one completes them, no one's being benefited from them. Okay. Now, the second reason, and this is all about you here, okay? The second reason from a financial perspective here is that the money just doesn't make sense. The math just doesn't make sense. So as I said, uh, research from Podia found that across 132,000 courses online, average price point was $137. But let's just say that we're feeling good, right? We're feeling really optimistic. We're gonna sell something for $200. So let's go with that for a second. I'm gonna walk you through what the math looks like on this. And I really want you to let this sink in because I'm not making these numbers this is real math based on having been in business online since 2005, selling everything from eBooks, supplements, courses, high ticket coaching, and everything in between. Okay. So let's say that you want to earn $20,000 per month. If you sell a $200 course, and let's just, let's just assume like you're selling nothing else, just a $200 course, and you're going to build your business around that, your fortune, your dream. You need to sell 100 courses per month, not for the year, per month. So 200 times 100 is 20,000. Okay. Not too bad, right? 100 not too bad. Can you do that month after month after month, largely on autopilot? That's a different scenario. So let's assume a 1% conversion ratio or 1% conversion rate, which means you have a course. It's most likely sitting on some type of sales page, a web page, or even maybe selling it through a webinar. And let's assume a 1% conversion rate. I'm saying 1% and that's honestly being generous. Thinking you're going to sell something for 200 bucks from a web page to strangers is, is a, honestly, it's a big ask. Now let's just assume you have an email list or a social following. So you have some warm people in there. So we'll give it a 1%. That's the typical conversion rate on like a $10 ebook, just so you know. So we're going to go with 1%. So we need a hundred buyers at a 1% conversion rate, which means we need 10,000 visitors landing on this page, the offer of your course, 10,000 visitors per month. Okay. So where are you getting the traffic from? 
Well, let's look at two options. Let's look at you have an amazing social media following. Let's say that you are the most influential person in your space. You have an amazing engagement on Instagram. And let's just say that your Instagram engagement is 5%. Like you are crushing it. By the way, do you know what the average engagement on Instagram is? According to Sprout Social, it's 0.98%. So less than 1% engagement. Let's feel good today, 5%, let's go with that. You need 10,000 visitors to your page to sell the thing. If you are getting 5% engagement on your social posts, that would mean that you would need 200,000 followers and continually growing at a fast rate on a monthly basis to get just your social media following over to the web page. So you need 200,000 followers at a 5% engagement rate, which is almost unheard of. Let's just be even more conservative. Let's just use the average of 0.98 engagement rates, which means that when you post something on social media, people actually do stuff like thumbs up, comment, maybe they click 0.98%. You would need 1,020,000 followers. From those followers, to generate 10,000 visits. And that's just in a one month time frame. Do that every single month consistently, okay? So I don't know about you, maybe you're the very, very, very small percentage of people out there who has more than a million followers on Instagram. I mean, I sure don't. Do you? So where else are we getting the traffic from? Well, let's look at advertising. Now, if you're thinking like affiliates and joint ventures and all that kind of stuff, let me just burst that bubble because no one's sending you traffic if they're not making a lot of money. And if you're selling something for $200 that has a 1% conversion rate, they're not making a lot of money. So that's not gonna happen. So let's consider paid traffic, Facebook, Instagram, right? It's the same, it's meta, it's the same platform. So let's say you wanted to run ads and this is my wheelhouse because this is how we build our business. And by the way, I built my first business 100% on content for the first seven to eight years. So I've done all all this stuff, right? I'm, ta I'm talking, like, I'm not just making stuff up out of thin air here. I'm talking like the whole gamut of stuff and I'm speaking from experience. Right now as Healthpreneur, 95% of our revenue comes from paid traffic, even though we do do stuff on Instagram and TikTok, but we're building that sucker for the future, not today. So let's assume that you're running ads and you need 10,000 visitors per month. And I'll just be very conservative and, and friendly with you. And we'll say $1.50 per click. And let's just assume that you're targeting cold traffic because most people don't know who you are. So let's just say $1.50 a click. And still we're gonna be very generous and keep that 1% conversion rate on the landing page, on the sales page. So to get 10,000 visits a month, you need 10,000 times $1.50. That's $15,000 in ad spend. Okay, cool. We're profitable by 5,000, right? So you've made $5,000 profit because you sold, let's break it down again. You spent $15,000 on ads, you got 10,000 visitors to the web page. 1% of those 10,000 equals 100 customers. 100 customers at $200 is 20,000. So you've made 20,000, you spent 15. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, you have to be the world's best copywriter to sell something for 200 bucks to cold strangers from a sales page, but we'll just, we'll deal with that another time. Okay, but we forgot one thing. We forgot the average refund rate on courses is 10%. And quite honestly, it's closer to 20, but let's just go with 10. 10% of 100 is 10. 10 times 20 is 2,000. So we take $2,000 off of your profit and you're left with $3,000 per month. So let me ask you this. Is it worth making $3,000 profit knowing that 85% of your customers are never gonna complete the course and, and, and thus not get the results that they want? And listen, I'll let you decide. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but hopefully this speaks for itself because that's the God honest truth. That's how the numbers break down. And if you're a smart business person, it's pretty self-explanatory. So earlier I mentioned there's only one exception to this rule, and I wanna share this as a bonus with you. The only time I would recommend that you sell an online course is in the following, when you don't need to. When you do not need to sell an online course because your business is ripe with profits and you have another major profit center that does most of the heavy lifting for you, at that point, you could consider offering an online course. I have clients that will say, you know, I've been on the call, I've been on the phone with a couple of prospects and they said my coaching program is too expensive. I'm thinking of selling something for less to accommodate those people. I'm like, don't fucking do that. It's a waste of time for the reasons I just told you. And it's not even worth it. Like the juice is not worth the squeeze. Where you're, you're gonna get a couple people to pay you $200 and make a couple hundred bucks. It's, it's a waste of your time. So you get to the point where you're making millions in revenue, millions, not thousands, because at that point, you don't need to sell the course. But if you do sell the course at that point, there's a few things that are probably happening. Number one is you have a following, a larger following here. It could be tens of thousands of people, it could be hundreds of thousands of people in email and social. We've already looked at the numbers. If you don't have a following, you're not gonna make any money. So 
Don't sell anything for the cheap on the cheap if you don't have a large following. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you can create a course and sell it largely on autopilot with very high margins. And what I mean by that is, is it requires like no contact with you, no customer service, no back end. Now, obviously that might sound like we're just trying to rip people off and sell whatever. I'm not saying that. I'm saying create something amazing, but you can create something amazing for $200 and then expect to deliver unbelievable supports to those customers. Why would you? They spend $200, not 20,000, right? Very different ballgame. And the third thing is that if you decide to do it at this point in business is that the a course becomes a nice profit maximizer. It doesn't eat into your margins. It doesn't have delivery implications for your team. It doesn't cut into your resources. You don't have to fulfill a tremendous amount. It's like people log in and that's it. They get access to it. You factor in refund rates, all that kind of stuff. And if you do things properly, then you basically add all of those course sales to your bottom line. And I'm saying it's a profit maximizer because if you're selling a course for $200, $400, $500, even $1,000, in no way, shape or form would I recommend you run paid traffic to that because the cost of running paid ads to a course for a couple hundred dollars is not even worth it because at that point, it's no longer a profit maximizer. It's just one more thing you have to optimize in your business and it diverts your focus from what I would recommend you spend your time doing, which is building an absolutely amazing high ticket coaching program that makes your business a tremendous amount of money and more importantly, actually transforms your clients' lives. And that's what I would recommend if you are a health professional who wants to help people, who wants to make a lot of money and who doesn't want to be burning the wheels and burning the candle at both ends, trying to scramble selling low price stuff all day, that's what you got to do instead is you start at the top. You work with fewer people at premium price points, you fill up your cup and then the more you have for yourself, obviously in the service of other people, when you're ready down the road, you can give back in all sorts of amazing ways with a low price course if you want to, and if you have a large following and it makes sense to do so. So I hope this makes sense for you. If you think I'm full of shit, let me know in the comments below and I'd love to see what you're doing instead. But if you agree with me, I'd love to know what about this video has really got a light bulb turning for you based on this conversation around selling an online course, which obviously you know my thoughts on that now. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, remember, subscribe. Got lots of other videos to help you grow a smarter, more profitable online health business that helps more people, including yourself. I'll see you in the next video.